Greetings, YouTube. This is Dave Croft. Welcome to another 52 Q's uh, weekly vlog check-in. I hope that you guys are having a great 2019, and uh, we are on to week four here in 52 Q's. Uh, and what we're going to be doing today, what, what I'm doing today, I'm, I'm going to look back at last week's Q, which was a light tension Q, and then I'm going to talk about the Q that is coming up. So last week's Q was a, a light tension Q, meaning a Q for something like a, a documentary or like a crime scene investigation or even like uh, like a cooking show where they're learning their fates and, and they're, they're trying to figure out who, who won. Or if there's ever, if you've ever seen any of like The Bachelor or Temptation Island, those types of shows when when they are when they are choosing, you know, and there's that tension. And so uh, it's, it's light tension. It's not scary. It's it's a little suspenseful, but uh, it tends to be relatively harmonically neutral. So the chords aren't changing very fast, if at all. And it's not overtly dark or overtly dissonant. And it's not also uh, it's not overtly positive and major sounding. It's it's light tension. And so there are a couple of hallmarks of light tension that that I like to incorporate. First of all is slow moving harmony and so the chords aren't changing very fast also i like to incorporate some sort of rhythmic pulse some sort of underlying some sort of synthy kind of underlying thing and then a, a melody a, a, a melody of some kind prominent melody usually like on a piano or a dulcimer or a string sound or 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 something kind of plucky, I, I guess, for, for lack of a better term. And so those are the observations that I've made from the hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of light tension cues that I've studied. And I think I think it works really well. So for light tension cues, that is, uh, that's, that's kind of my go-to. And so the, the cue that I wrote this past week for the week three challenge at 52 cues was a track I've called Through the Barrens. And so we're going to take a listen to that, and then I'm going to do a breakdown on the other side. All right, so that was through the barrens, and let's take a uh, let's take a line by line kind of breakdown of uh, what's going on. When I when I write when I write light tension cues, usually the first thing I do is lay down some sort of pad or some sort of uh, 
underlying kind of wash, like background wash, like a, I think like a painter, you know, a painter kind of puts a, a wash on the background that kind of establishes the overall tone and color of of the painting. And so this is a these are a couple of pads. Uh, the first one is from Gravity by Heaviosity. I'm a huge Heaviosity fan. I'm not endorsed by Heaviosity. I just think they're a good idea. And so this first pad. And it is EQ'd with most, most of the low end out. Layer on top of that, a second pad also from... Oh, no, I'm sorry. That wasn't Gravity. Uh, this is the eDNA from Spitfire. The Earth, I think. Yep, the Earth Library. The eDNA is the engine. And so this is more of my low end. And what's really important with these types of cues, especially cues that have very slow, almost drone-like harmony, is to make sure that the sound is going somewhere. It's not just kind of sitting there. It's not just one sound, one tone that's just mm, kind of going on. There has to be an evolution to that. And so this library does a really good job of that. This back and forth kind of LFO, blend them together, and you get this type of sound. Now, these patches are pretty processor intensive. If you look at my CPU, you'll see it spike, which is why I started them off frozen. And so I'm going to go ahead and refreeze those while, while that's going on, just because, it, like I said, it's so processor intensive. So I usually start there, and I then look to set up my pulse, and that pad will kind of dictate my harmony. And so I have really slow moving harmony. We're just sitting around on that low G. It's kind of in G minor. And so it sits on the G minor. Then eventually uh, it will move up to this five chord. Right? And and sit on that for, for eight bars and then move back down. So it's super slow moving harmony. And then I will establish my, my pulses, which will coincide with that harmony. So it starts with the harmony. I think I think that's just my, my background in, in jazz and it's jazz is so harmonically based. Uh, composition and, and, and improvisation is all a reaction to harmony in, in my opinion and just what works best for me. And so uh, this is an evolve patch that I have bounced into place and chopped up. Uh, the full patch sounds like this. If we go a little bit later. Right, it has that has kind of the bass and the kind of the groove thing, and it is tonal. But uh, I, I, it was a little too much energy on just coming out. And by the way, this is Evolve that is also by Heaviosity. So I, I chopped it up because I didn't want to get to the uh, the high pitch. The, the, I didn't want to get to that too early, so I chopped it up. layered in a tuned gong on every bar four and this tuned gong is just Vienna ensemble tuned gong. this is a really good patch really good I'm digging that I use this quite a quite a lot so we have our pads mixing these can be a little bit tough uh, when we're looking at our EQs because we have to kind of carve everything out and so I have let me open it oh, because it's frozen because I have th these pads so I have to make sure that the, the the base pulse here doesn't get in the way right and you can get away with it a little bit tuck that down because this is where this patch is coming through this pad here is whoops let me do that this pad is coming through in that area Right, so right where that's coming through, try to try to make sure that uh, that this gets out of the way. Even though I probably could have done a better job of that. Nonetheless, let's let's refreeze those. And so then once I have once I have the pulse and once I have the pads and the the, the that's that's kind of the bed. And then I look at some melodic materials and I I really dig piano, and I'm not necessarily a pianist. This is the gentleman from Native Instruments, 
And here's something I didn't know, or I just didn't realize. When you open up the patch, it looks like that. And the default patch doesn't sound all that great. But if you click this little guy right here, where this, this camera, these are snapshots. And maybe you know that, but it wasn't super obvious to me. And there are tons of presets which are stellar. And each of these piano libraries that Native Instruments puts out, if I can get to them, they all have presets like that. And they're really, really great. They're really great. So this is the levitating upright. It's really kind of moody. Did have to get the bottom end out of the way. Obviously the sustain pedal just mashed the whole time. All right, so I have this really super slow moving melody. I don't think I put a key signature in. And so the melody repeats exactly, but when you change the chords, your, your perception of the melody kind of alters a little bit. This is, this is what I call the static melody idea. You take one melody, repeat it exactly, no variations, and change the chord underneath it, and what is and isn't a chord tone kind of shifts. And so, so the, the perception is different and it's a really interesting effect that, that I like to use especially in this last note under the D versus versus no uh, where is it here it is Yeah, and because the, the melody is so long and drawn out that you, hopefully, if I've done my job right, the listener doesn't clue in, hey, that guy's using the same melody over and over. Okay, and where were we? Added in a gated uh, pad. So the form is basically a little intro, state the melody, super long form melody, very slow moving, slow moving har harmony, have four bars where it just kind of sits for a moment, right? And then take the whole thing again and adding intensity and uh, bringing a lot more energy to the table. And energy, it's all relative. This is still a light tension cube. But before I get into that, let me just go over a couple of more uh, things I have happening here. This is a, a boom, just a low boom from the damage library also by heaviosity and this is these are some symbol effects like bode symbol from evolve also by heaviosity wow this this cue is obviously sponsored in part by heaviosity and i have plenty of libraries and here here's the thing man you, you use what you know you use what you like and you use what you know works and so that that's really what's what's going on What's going on there? So some very cool symbol effects uh, sprinkled in all throughout at phrase points. So here I have one where the phrase starts, and then I put another one to signal to a potential editor, right? Because that's the whole point of this is to make something that's friendly for editors. At the phrase point, when the chord changes, when the chord changes back, when we go into that, that four bar kind of breakdown, for lack of a better term, and so then I have one when it starts, chord change and at the end and it's not always the same so that guy kind of sounds like that that guy kind of sounds like that that guy sounds like that sounds like that all right that's the same one and then that's the different one right now so usually though usually I put I bounce these into into audio like I would uh, just render that and place it as a waveform. I find I find waveforms much easier to place like this, but I, I didn't for this one. I just I just kept it as a as a MIDI. But uh, but that's that's a that's a good good tip for you if you if you're using suspended symbol or or, or kind of one shots like this that aren't necessarily tempo synced, that can be a real pain. So 
rendering them into audio, bounce them, you know, bounce them in place in Logic, and uh, that's what I, that's how you're doing it there. And so, yeah, so once we get into the second half, we start, we need to bring some more rhythmic elements into it. All right, so we have this kind of almost castanet kind of, everything that has crazy delay on it. And uh, I did I did mix up some of the velocities here. So it's not just the same thing kind of over and over. It's a little bit lighter there. Bring in a little triangle thing. And then, uh, and I think this is all Evolve. I think I just kind of went, I'm going to use this library for everything. And just a little groove. You could see where I started out with the snare drum idea. I felt like it was a little too much, but I brought in to kind of coincide with the bar, you know, every bar four that, that gong is hitting. I brought in the snare drum again. This ad added snare layer. And I did EQ it to, to get the, the kick mostly out of the way here because it's, it's a light light tension groove super reverby have some booms and you can see the booms start kind of lighter and then they really pick up here so all of the percussion along with the cymbal effects uh, sound well, let's go and put the tuned gong in here too Put it with the glitches. I do have a, a gated pad. I don't think I mentioned that. Just bring more sixteenth note energy. This is this is really helping to to push the momentum of the cue forward. This is yet another heaviosity patch. This is vocalese, and one of the things I like about the vocalese library and their gravity, uh, all their gravity packs, is that they have uh, variants of each. So you have two pads, like two big, really kind of washy pads. You have a motion, which is a which is a, a gated preset, which you could go in and edit if you wanted to get all up into that. And they have shorts, so you can actually play them melodically. So super versatile library. Okay, pads are still doing their things, but I have doubled up the octaves here. Not too loud though, not too loud. So just layered on an octave on top with that top pad. But speaking of octaves, take the melody, split it into octaves. Whoops. Split it into or, or layer octaves and delay the top octave just a little bit. You can see here, and that creates almost kind of like a droplet. Also added a low, low octave kind of hitting down there, and so putting it all together, four bars of intro. We're just establishing, you know, establishing where we're going. And then there's my my bar four thing. Bring in the melody. Hint at at that groove, and I'm gonna I'm gonna fully lay into that later. I'm here in bar 25, but I kind of hint at it but I'm establishing this every bar four thing. All right, chord change. We add a little effect to help signal that chord change. And this evolve, this little glitchy kind of evolve patch does, it is pitched, so it change the notes there. So now it's playing down on this note. Bigger hit. Mm, 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 mm. I brought in this motion, so I left out the uh, the original pulses. And now we wash, rinse, repeat. Add a little bit of groove. Add some octaves up top.
As far as the mix itself, let me bring in the uh, mixer window here. As far as the mix itself, very straightforward. Uh, I did go through and, and do a lot with the EQs when you have so much kind of low end and, and so many pads and, and pulses and everything, you really have to be careful carving things out. And I didn't put one there because my overarching track stack here is covering that EQ. It was really quiet, so I had to I had to put a gain a gain plug in to to push my my mix a little bit, and then I'm just using I'm using Ozone for my my mixing and my mastering. Love Ozone again. I'm not uh, keep getting this error. It's annoying me. And so I love Ozone. Not endorsed by Isotope. I just think they're a good idea. didn't do much with the exciter I do like to uh, I do like to put a post EQ mid side I find that with television applications usually your stereo mix is being run through a pro logic you know kind of extraction interpolation type of idea so mid side for me I like to to scoop out the mids a little bit or my, my low mids in the mid, so my low mid frequencies in the, in the middle field and then kind of push those to the side. But I also pull out the, the low end from my side mix. I have found that that can really, that can really screw, screw around with sub crossovers. So I, I tend to pull low end out of my, my, my side mix there. And then a, a limiter just to get us, I shoot for on, on, on kind of just library tracks. I usually shoot for 18 to 15 luffs. I have mixed as high as eight, seven and eight luffs, minus seven and eight luffs for some of the sports stuff. But uh, I tend to shoot for 18 to 15. Nothing, nothing, nothing too, too intense here. Yeah, so, so that is uh, Through the Barrens, and yeah, really had a good time putting that together, and I hope you found that helpful. Moving forward here into week four, and I mean, we're already almost almost uh, halfway, or actually we are halfway through uh, week four here, and uh, let me turn that off. And so the challenge this week is to write a piece of music based off of this picture, and it's really interesting. I've already started seeing some of the some of the the, the pieces come in, and it's really fascinating. And the whole point, I, reason I picked this picture is because it could be interpreted so many different ways. I, I you know, if I put a picture of you know a, a, a rhino in the desert, then automatically you're kind of in a in a space. If I put a picture of a kid on a swing set, then you're already kind of in a, in a space. The, the point with this challenge and writing to this picture is coffee shops can mean different things to different people. I'm when, when I, when I put it up there, I was thinking much more of kind of almost like a Starbucks ad type of type of a thing, which are, which can be really kind of provocative, thought provoking kind of thing. But I've al already seen some of these cues, which are super happy, super upbeat. I've seen some, which are really introspective and, and almost melancholy because coffee shops mean different things to different people. And that was the whole point of, of putting just a photo for inspiration. So if, if you're watching this and maybe the, the, the week has passed, you can still join us. You can join us over at facebook.com slash groups slash 52 cues. I'll have a link to that in the show notes. And that is what's coming up. Now, where I'm at with mine, Man, it's it's it's. I'm not sure I'm going to be able to to write to this queue. I've already written three queues this week for other clients uh, because because there's a very there's a very prominent sporting event coming up that the network that I write for is <laughs> is broadcasting. <laughs> Let's just say that uh, that feels braggy, and I don't mean it braggy, but I they, they've had a call like almost last minute call for for cues for that. And so I've been busting it all week, already written, like I said, three cues. None of them are related to coffee shops, but we'll, we'll, we'll see. We'll see what happens. I've got to write to uh, what's putting food on the table and what's keeping the lights on. And uh, the, the whole point of the 52 cues is to keep you motivated and to keep you, you going in case maybe you feel 
you're in a creative drought, or you just want to learn more about sustainable creativity in the production music industry. So thanks for watching. I know that was a little long, but hopefully you got something out of it. Uh, until next time, I will, I'll see you next week. Peace.